Welcome back. I've had a lot of people asking me about my approach to lighting interviews. And so in the coming videos, we're gonna take a look at numerous ways that you can approach setting up the lighting for an interview. But I think before we do that, it's gonna be important just to take a look at the equipment that I use uh, and the equipment that I bring with me on any job when I am shooting an interview. And let's just see what's in that package, um, what kind of things that I'm using on a regular basis. And we'll break all that down so that you can see what you might wanna have in your kit uh, that's gonna cover you for the vast majority of the projects that you're working on. So let's start bringing some of this stuff out, laying it out, and let's get into it. So we got everything in, um, and it looks like a lot of stuff. Um, and you know, for the most part, the stuff that I have here, uh, I can fit onto one rock and roller cart, minus the, the long rolling cases. Um, so it is pretty compact. Um, you are able to travel with this. All this stuff fits into the back of my car. For traveling documentary interview setups, um, this is gonna cover you for the vast majority of the setups that you might run into. So let's first take a look. What did I just do, right? I just brought everything in and laid it out. And when I lay out all of my equipment, um, I try to do it in a way that it's not stacked all on top of each other and it's a mess, which is you know, sometimes what you might end up doing when you're trying to just unload the vehicle and get it out and get it into the location as quickly as possible. But if you're a little methodical about how you lay stuff out, then I can immediately leave it there and then start pulling stuff out of their cases and starting to work with it right off the bat without having to reshift where everything is. So that's point number one is just start being organized from the beginning. And I know you've heard me say that before. Part number two is where am I going to put all this stuff? So we're inside of a house and in the other room, in the living room, uh, we're going to be setting up three different interview lighting setups. So I went ahead and just did a little bit of a scout, figured out where I might be placing the camera, what my background might be. And then once I've done that, try to figure out where's a spot that's out of the way that I'm not gonna see in my frame, I'm not gonna be tripping over as I'm trying to place light stands. Um, and so I don't have to end up moving this stuff multiple times throughout the day. And so because I'm gonna be doing three different setups in the other room, I ended up choosing the kitchen as a place to lay everything out. Um, it's accessible, uh, it's not that far away, but it's hidden, it's clear, and I'm not gonna be stepping over all this gear as I'm trying to set up in the other room. So think about those kind of things before you get into your location. All right, so now that we've got everything in, let's start to take a look at what we're dealing with. So the first thing we're gonna go through is look at the variety of lights that I have. Um, so starting over here, uh, the first thing that I've got is I have my, uh, an Aperture 600D. And I went ahead and went with the 600D mainly because the output of the D over the X, the bicolor version, uh, is slightly higher. And so when I need to have this much output, it's gonna be daylight balanced. I'm trying to match a window. Shooting an interview in tungsten, I'm not gonna need this kind of an output for it. So that's the reason I went with the D. Up to you uh, what variety you wanna go with. And the next light that I have is, open this up, the Aperture 300X. Now this one, uh, being the X, is a bicolor version. And so if I am shooting in a tungsten environment, then this gives me the flexibility to be either daylight or in tungsten. And what I've found is when I'm needing to shoot a tungsten balanced interview, is this gives me the amount of output that I need. And again, don't need to go with something as big as the 600D or in that instance, the 600X. So this is another great flexible light that can cover you in a lot of different situations. Moving on from the 600 and the 300, uh, the next thing that I have is I have two of these 60Xs. Um, and again, these are bicolor, uh, so they can cover me in a lot of different shooting situations. And these things are great, right? This is a very small uh, unit that can either be battery powered or it can be AC powered. Um, and that battery is just running off of uh, Sony NP batteries. So this thing is very flexible. And what I really like about this is 
This is basically taking the place of, you know, uh, using something like a dado light. Um, these things are great because they are, they have a spot and a flood function, so they're Fresnels. Um, and these are just great for adding a little bit of pop of light or pop of color uh, in your background. Or you can use these to give a, a really kind of refined hair light. So these things are really great to have and I've got two of those. And then the last piece of my lighting kit um, are the Aperture B7C bulbs. So these are great because they can either run again off of AC power if you just put these into um, a light socket in a lamp or something like that. Um, but they can also be run off a of battery. These have built-in uh, lithium batteries. And so you can, if you need to, you can just kind of hang these up somewhere. Um, and they're great little sources that you can use. So now that we've gotten through that, uh, let's take a look at some of the diffusion options that I have. Uh, and you can start to see now how we're going to refine the quality of the light uh, that we're working with. So in here, I've got a big old milk crate full of fabric. Um, I will always bring, these are just kind of scrap pieces of duvetine, six by six ultra bounce, china silk, artificial silk, bleached muslin, unbleached muslin. Um, and every, all the fabrics that I have are all in six by six sizes. Um, I, I find being able to shoot inside of a house where you generally have eight foot ceilings, um, working with an eight by is just a little too big for this space. So six by uh, is something that's manageable with relatively low ceilings, but it also gives you a nice big uh, soft key light um, that looks very natural and you know, is not a, a really hard focused light. And then the rest of the fabric that I have, which there's still quite a bit, is all part of the Westcott system. Um, and if you don't know about them, Westcott really makes some amazing, not only fabrics, but also frames. Um, I've been working with Westcott stuff for, for quite some time uh, with their Scrim Gym set. Um, and it's basically a set of aluminum tubes that all interlock and connect together. And you can make frames, you know, kind of as big as you want. Um, and then they've got Velcro on those that you can just tag up uh, what your material is. So these are really, really great options to have when you're traveling. Westcott was nice enough to send me some of their, their newer stuff. Everything that I've been working with has been the original Scrim Gym set um, that I've had for many, many years and has gone all over the world with me. Uh, so they were nice enough to send me their new Scrim Gym Cine kit. Um, and we'll take a look at, at more details of that once we get into our interview lighting setups. Something that I will say is if you are interested in knowing a little bit better about what these diffusion fabrics do, how they affect the quality of the light, what they look like, uh, be sure to check out my video on the ultimate diffusion and bounce test where I basically take every option that is readily used on a film set uh, and we take a look at how that affects the quality of the light. So that'll be a good reference as well as giving you a little bit better idea of what these are going to do. Um, this is something that I have had for many years and this thing is great. This is a Matthews Road Rags kit uh, and what this is is a travelable um, 2 by 3 frame set um, that gives you a whole heck of a lot of options, right? This gives me a artificial silk, this gives me a double net and it gives me a single net um, and it also gives me uh, a solid. So you've got these frames that are collapsible that build out to a two by three. Um, and this is great as we're going to see for being able to shape the light, being able to kind of cut light on your subject and really start to sculpt how that light is falling in the space. Um, one thing that I will say is that this kit natively comes with two frames, um, the silk, the double, the single and the solid. What I've done and, and what I found to be really helpful is I've uh, doubled the number of frames that I have. So I have four frames in here. So I'm basically able to build everything that I have in the kit. Um, and then I bought a, an additional two by three solid because um, I feel like I'm using the solids quite a bit. And so that all again packs into the same, the same bag. And so this is a great travelable option. The next thing I have are some lighting modifiers for my aperture lights. So this is an aperture lantern. And so what this will do is it basically is a big uh, china ball that I can put onto either my 600D or my 300X. 
What this will do is this will just clip onto your light and it just gives you a really soft um, kind of 360 light. Uh, the next modifier that I have is a Chimera Octabank. And this thing is great for very quickly being able to get a large, soft uh, light source. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna take a look at is the grip items that I have. So my light stands, stuff like that. So these are um, airy kit stands. And these things are great because they don't weigh much, um, but they open up and have a nice footprint to them. Um, and these are really great for putting your lights on. Um, you know, I think a lot of people will often think that putting your lights on a C stand is gonna be the best bet, um, but they're not as good for really heavy items. You know, because this tripod function of the light stand and the wider base of the feet is gonna actually better support your unit. So instead of having to lug around a bunch of C-stands, I can take a whole bunch of these and fit them into a smaller bag. So it's a win-win for everybody. In this one bag, I have eight light stands. And honestly, that will probably cover me for most of the setups that I've got. Um, but I do have some heavier duty stands just in case. So in here, I've got two C-stands. Um, and I like to go with the C-stands that have the detachable turtle base to them, just because it makes it a lot more transportable. So, you know, again, kind of what we were talking about, the orientation of these legs um, are not really designed to take on a lot of weight. What they are designed to do is to be able to orient it in a way that if you're hanging a flag off of one side, it's not a lot of weight, but it does give you uh, some stability in that regard but it's a lot better to use the tripod leg stands uh, for something that's got more weight to it. But these things really do come in handy. So again, we'll take a look at that as we get into our setup. I also have one uh, 20 inch C stand that oftentimes I'll use as my monitor stand uh, or if I need something that's a little bit lower. So I've got two full size C stands and one small C stand. And the last thing that I have is I've got uh, this stand that will go to nine and a half feet. Um, and again, this will be able to support a lot more weight uh, than the kit stands that I showed you before. What's also great about this, I'm able to affix wheels to the bottom. And so now I've got a rolling stand. And what I generally end up doing is I put my key light on this so that once it's set, then I'm able to kind of move it around. If I need to wrap the light a little bit more, I'm not having to kind of pick up and shift that light and those stands around. So this thing is great. This is all that I've got in this bag. It's heavy enough as it is, um, but you know, it's good to have some options for heavier duty lights. By and large, between my eight kit stands that I've got and these C stands and the rolling stand, I have plenty to be able to work with the setups that I'm used to working with. All right, so the last one I've got is my Westcott Scrim Gym case. Um, this case itself comes with the book light kit uh, that we'll show in one of our lighting setups. Um, but what I've done is just reconfigured and I've just put all the pipe in here from my book light kit, from my DP kit, um, and from a six by frame kit. So I've got a lot of options in here, but basically what the concept of the scrim gym is it's these aluminum pipes uh, in a variety of sizes. So I've got some short ones, I've got some long ones. They come with these connector pieces. And so I can just click this in and I can make whatever sized frame I need to make. And this is really great because now I've got, you know, I can go up to eight by, uh, you can go bigger if you want. Um, I'm rarely using anything that's larger than eight. Um, but I'm now able to travel with these frames that traditionally would be using speed rail, um, you know, aluminum square pipe, but all those are going to be cut to length. And so this is something that is fully travelable, can fit in the back of your car. Uh, and by being this one inch pipe, uh, it's got a lot of rigidity to it. And having these, these interlocking connectors, both here as well as the corners, is I'm able to build a full frame but again, don't have to stick six by four by eight by pipes in the back of my car. So I have always loved working with these uh, and I'm excited to show you the, this new model as well. All right, so we've gotten through our lights, we've gotten through our diffusion, we've gotten through our stands. And then the last thing that we're gonna get through is 
I'm always traveling with just this ditty bag full of grip hardware. So in here, I've got a variety of Maffer clamps. I've got a variety of gobo heads. I've got a few Cardellini clamps in both the full size as well as, you know, a smaller one. You know, just having a grab bag of these kind of grip items is really, really good to have. I also have a collection of spring clamps. Um, you know, these are great for being able to quickly hang a piece of fabric. Um, if you've got a curtain rod and you don't like the curtains that are on there and you want to use a different kind of material, you can just quickly spring clamp those to it. I have a Ziploc full of clothespins or C47s. And then lastly, I just have a ditty bag full of stingers. Travel with at least a couple um, power strips. The only thing I don't have here, because I didn't feel like lugging them up, are a few sandbags. So. Safety is obviously important when you're setting all of this heavy stuff up, especially in other people's houses. And so having some sandbags is really important. Traveling with a bunch of sandbags is just not reasonable. So make sure that you're putting a sandbag on something that is really heavy, something that has the potential of tipping over, especially if you're setting a light outside, uh, you're gonna wanna put a sandbag, sandbag or two on that so it doesn't fall over. But otherwise, what I will often do is I will just take any of the grip hardware that I'm not using, and this stuff is a bunch of dead weight. So if I'm not using this, then all I need to do is just hang this on the, on the light stand, and now it's acting as a sandbag. If I have a backpack, I can hang that on the light stand. You know, you don't have to use and lug around a 25 or a 50 pound bag of dirt. Use what you've got to make sure that things are safe. Okay, well, I think that covers everything that I've got. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this was helpful. Links to everything that I have will be in the description, so be sure to check that out. Thank you to Westcott for sending me this Scrim Gym set, and I can't wait to show you what that looks like in our interview lighting setups. And thanks so much for watching, and be sure to check out the next series of videos where we actually start putting all this stuff to use.